picture it. You spend all night marinating some chicken and ribs. You've got your trademark potato salad without, without raisins. Just being clear on that. And it's chilling in the fridge. Okay, setting the scene. At the 4th of July cookout, your family and friends call you the grill master and nobody goes hungry. And then the next day, disaster strikes. Everyone's got food poisoning. You heard me, everyone. And no one will ever let you host the cookout ever again. Well, thankfully, you can avoid that nightmare. Joining me live, oh, this show, <laughs> is Trevor Craig, Technical Director for Food Testing at Microbag Labs, which is based here in Pittsburgh. And Trevor, you are going to help us avoid giving everybody that we know food poisoning. So obviously, first thing, if we're cooking out, we're cooking out. So how long can the classic 4th of July dishes be left outside before they're no longer safe to eat? Normally you're talking about you only want food that is outside of the food safety zone out for a couple of hours. But when we're talking in the summer when it's a little hotter, that's even shorter. So it should really only be left out an hour and everything should be kept cold or just kept hot. If it's more than an hour, don't eat it. Don't even save it. Don't eat it later. More than an hour, which is so crazy because like, you know, my, my whole life is like people you just put it in like a metal, um, like an aluminum tray and people just leave it there barely ever with any ice. So this is like really important information because a lot of us don't know this. So how do you avoid another thing, cross contamination when you've got just one, you know, maybe a little tiny, tiny charcoal grill and a lot of food to cook? Yeah, what's really important is you can cook things together, that's okay, but you have to make sure that your finished foods stay finished and your raw foods stay away from those products. Because if you cook it and it's done, but you pass it over with some raw chicken or put some raw vegetables under some raw chicken, that juices can drip down underneath it, cross contaminate, and it doesn't matter how long you cooked it because you just re-inoculated it with salmonella or anything else that could be dangerous to consume later. Yeah, and okay, what's the protocol, by the way, if we do eat something that maybe we... <laughs> we shouldn't have if we did eat it and it, and it was out longer than an hour. So things like salmonella, listeria, or E. coli can take a couple days before you start to see signs, which is why it's sometimes really hard to go back and figure out what made you sick. Um, stay hydrated, be very, very careful and watch. And if you don't start getting better, you need to go to the hospital. Uh, it is really important, especially for those who are older or younger or immunocompromised. Yeah, and by the way, whenever we're doing our shopping uh, for our 4th of July, um, dinners, what should we be reading on the back of hot dog and hamburger meat packages? Uh, you can get any type that you really like or what you think is safe. You can always check out nutritional. Hot dogs are known for having a lot of salt in them and having a lot of fat and having a lot of calories, but there are healthier options out there. Uh, the other thing to pay really close attention to is the cooking instructions on the back. Is it considered ready to eat or does it say you need to cook it for a longer period of time? That's really important to make sure uh, and just be really safe about what you're cooking and cooking together. What would you say would be like the biggest misconception whenever it comes to um, cookouts and the food that we serve for holidays like this? Um, I don't know if there's a huge misconception. The thing that gets me when I go to a cookout is people using the same utensils to handle raw meat as then they use to handle the cooked meat or then they use handle something else or put it on your plate. Uh, that always grosses me out. I'm always at the cookout early so I can get that food before it's been sitting out for an hour or longer. And I'm, I'm very watchful of what's going on by that grill. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, I would hate to have you with a cookout because you'd be you'd be over my shoulder just looking at everything, I'm sure. There's a lot of side eye. <laughs> I bet. Trevor, this has been great. Thank you so much. Some really helpful tips. We are out of time, but um, best of luck to you and, and make sure we look, do not call Trevor and don't call us if you get sick <laughs> of the cookout because we told you what needs to happen. Thanks, Trevor. That's right. Thank you so much. <laughs>